We are one day away from the Diablo Immortal update, and there is so much information that we've unpacked over the past week and a half, and we have just a little bit more to deal with here today. The patch notes came out yesterday. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to cover them yesterday, but I wanted to do that today. Kind of a little bit more in-depth walking through everything. Now, we've talked about the update in general. We've talked about the new gems, the new set items, the new dungeon that's coming, the new PvP, but we may be able to have some more information in here. Now, March 29th from 5 to 7, but essentially for me, it's going to be March 30th, which means tomorrow there's going to be an update. And tomorrow at some point in time, maybe in the evening, we're most likely going to have a live stream for Diablo Immortal and uh, breaking things down. So in the codex here, the Accursed Towers, the Dungeon Elite Quest, the Ancestral Bloom. We have three new gems, new set items, Ashes of Tranquility, and a, coup, a few other events, plus some feature updates. So let's kind of get through this right here. The Accursed Towers is probably the biggest part of this update. It's the thing that's the newest system coming to the game. Diablo Immortal, PvP, new mode. The issue that some people are seeing here that I'm a little concerned of myself because as creators for Blizzard, uh, well, we don't get paid and we don't get to test these things out ahead of time, right? So we kind of get the information a few days early so we can kind of get the thoughts in our head, but we're not actually able to play it. So I don't know how this is going to feel, but let's look right here. Players must be in a clan here. This is it. Clans will compete in to claim ownership of towers, thereby providing powerful bonuses to clan members and the opportunity to acquire new cursed items. Players must be in a clan to participate in the cursed towers. So to do this PVP mode in general, you need to be in a clan. I don't love that. That's not easy, like just hop into the game for the first time ever, play it, and be able to do this PvP. You need to be a little bit deeper into the game before you can even get into it. Um, and then we'll kind of go through these images. These are all of the different towers. All of the different towers are going to have different buffs that you can receive from those towers that are clan-wide buffs. Each clan can have up to two hours under uh, two towers, I'm sorry, under their personal control per season. At the end of each eight week season, the ownership of the towers will be reset. So we're talking about essentially uh, 60 days, and then you're gonna have to fight over them all over again. At the start of the season, players will see many towers in the map and to select from, all of which will be unclaimed towers. During the first week of the season, from Monday Monday the 3rd to Saturday, the, to Saturday at 7, server time your clan's leaders can select a tower through the accursed tower menu and attempt to claim in your clan plunging your clan into the pve against <sighs> pve against hell's minions to control the tower by purifying it only one tower can be claimed per clan during the first week of the session all right so it's a pve thing to claim the tower then my assumption is once you own the tower, have claimed the tower, then it's PvP if people want to challenge that tower. All right, so a, a lot of PvE action going on here, which I actually do like. One second. Mm. We needed to fuel up. Going fast this morning, guys. While fighting demonic hordes to control the tower, your clan's objective is to collect cursed shards from slain demons. However, players can't simply attack enemies as they normally would. To deal damage to your foes, you'll first need to locate the active and activate the tower's curse sources. Doing so will make enemies vulnerable, allowing you to dispatch them and collect their cursed shards. Once the timer runs out, the top 10 clan members with the highest cursed shard amounts will have them added to their team's total. A clan can choose to do as many runs to collect cursed shards at the same at the same tower as they desire but only the highest team total will be retained wondering if you could make it so that 10 people collect the majority of the shards if your clan has collected the most cursed shards amongst all clans battling for the specific tower by saturday at seven the clan will then claim the tower man this is cool but it's in depth this is not an easy pvp mode this is not where you just log in and just start fighting over stuff. I don't know how I'm feeling about it. I mean, I hope that it's fun as hell. But man, this is not what we were asking for about PvP you could just dive into and start battling and not have to worry about objectives. This is going to take a lot of coordination. And in my opinion, only the best clans are going to be able to own towers. Claiming a tower 
is cause for celebration within your clan, but now you must defend it. Hell's minions will attempt to retake the stolen home. Once the corrupt me corruption meter reaches a certain amount, demonic incursions will flow, will follow. Members of your clan must come to defend your tower promptly or else, okay. It's kind of like raid the vault like. You're gonna be raided. People have to come and protect it. It's very much like, it sounds, it probably doesn't play, but it sounds very much like Raid the Vault. Ugh. I'm not talking about the coffee either. Legendary Contribution Chest. Looks like you can get some stuff, some demonic remains like we get from Hel from the um, Heliquary. Legendary Crest. There is a way to ward off Hell's mindless marauders through powering up your tower. Within the Accursed Tower menu, your clan leader can choose to power up your tower Doing so will not only end the attacks on it from demons, but increase the bonuses provided by your tower and periodic rewards provided by the rewards chest inside of it. Beware, as powering up your tower does come at a cost. Other clans will be able to challenge your clan to PvP match. All right, so if you secure your tower from PvE, you're opening it to PvP. Man. What are you guys thinking of this so far? I have so many thoughts going through my head about this. I'm thinking about my clan in particular and what it's gonna take to organize all of this with my clan. Good luck, Red. The rewards gained from towers sound desirable, right? Other clans on your server will certainly think so. Starting the second week of the season, clans will have to have a second tower under their control. These times, man, I hate how it's just time-based. Clans will be able to attempt to challenge your tower for ownership through an all-out PvP match. Okay. Should your clan prevail, they'll not only leave with bragging rights and a new tower to receive pe periodic rewards from, but also a bevy of rewards from participating in a PvP match, which include cursed items. All right, we talked about the new cursed gear that's coming, which are cool. I think the big question that everyone is thinking of right now is, are whales gonna take over this whole event? Are people that pay tons of money and play Diablo Immortal, going to dominate this event and just power themselves up more and get more rewards. Yeah. Because the first, because the first season of the Accursed Tower begins midweek, the schedule for the first week will differ from subsequent sessions. Okay, so this is basically our session right here. Maintenance, then we have the 31st through April 1st, collect the shards, then the first clan rewards. Each tower claims it. Ah, I don't like the schedule. I really don't like it. I want to talk to a few people in the community and see how what they think of this. Oh, I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a little messy, but we'll see. Hopefully, I'm wrong. All right. So we have our cursed items. They, remember, we talked about them having positive and negative properties. So here's an example. Let me uh, let me highlight what we're focusing on right here. Let's say you have shoulders with the following positive and negative properties. The summoning skills have a chance to re release a demonic roar. We talked about this in the update video. Dealing damage to nearby enemies increases the cooldown of dash skills. All right. Then you stumble across a pair of boots and the following positive and negative properties. Your summoning have a chance to release a demonic roar. Dealing damage to nearby enemies reduces primary attack damage. So you have a positive. Your summoning skills have a chance to release demonic roar, which does damage. But then the negative reduces the primary attack damage. So this is kind of fun, this new gear, because we can, you gotta balance out positive, negative. Is it worth it for the buff to take the negative? Now I would assume that the buffs are more of a buff than the negative is a negative or else who would ever wanna use that gear, right? So cursed gear is gonna be cool. I hope it's just not gated behind PVP success, which is then determined by spend in the game. All right, the Dread Reaver dungeon sounds fun. It's a brand new dungeon. Remember, you're gonna have to deal with that octopus-like boss that we featured yesterday in the video. Also, I put out a bunch of shorts with this kind of information if you wanna take a look at some of those as well. But essentially, you're on the boat and uh, you're dealing with brand new enemies, which are part dead seamen, uh, dead. Uh, you had the dead seamen, you had the, they were like part fish and they were part zombie or something like that. It was like a big uh, mixture of things. All right, but that's cool. The dungeon, we're gonna play over and over again. We're gonna get our rewards from the dungeon. It's going to be great. Now, elite quest from the Ancestral Bloom. 
In this new elite quest, available at Tate, the adventurous seeker in Westmarch, you'll aid in a mysterious mage seeking to undo, <clears throat> excuse me, to undo the wreckage of the past. Is this just a, the Ancestor Bloom way too adventure. I think this is just a, uh, like a, a little mini quest in the game. I don't think it's anything that's that crazy. Yeah, I think that's just a mini quest, which is fine. Three new legendary gems. We have the Gloom Cask, which is really the one that everyone's going to care about. I mean, everyone talks about the five stars, although most people wear the one or two stars. This one's going to increase res. Uh, this one. Okay, remember, this is at a rank 10, mind you. This is a five out of five rank 10. This is a uh, five to $10,000 gem. Your primary attack unleashes an aspect of gloom for eight seconds during which time your primary attacks will trigger gloom blades and deal 68% base damage and, and it goes on and on. Here are the actual details. So we have Lowe's Focused Gaze. Here, let's give you a little bit of a close up right here. Lowe's Focused Gaze increases the damage done by your charge skills by 20%. Uh, charge speed is increased by 32% charging speed. I personally don't like charge skills. I find them clunky to use, so I don't use them. That was the one star. Then we have the pain clasp, a two star gem. Increases damage dealt by 24% to enemies suffering a continuous af damage effect. With an enemy suffering from continuous damage within 10 yards, the movement speed is increased by 6%. This is a nice gem, guys. This one right here, damaging effect is something, I believe, like burn, or if you're doing something that has overtime effects, like a poison, then you can be able to deal 24% more damage suffering from those effects. And the speed buff is to on top of that. That's pretty good. I actually like that one a lot. The pain clasp, two-star gem, one that's realistic to upgrade. Then, of course, the gloom ca cla cask, like we just spoke of. Enemies hit by the Gloom Blades will take 24% increased damage from your primary attacks for three seconds. It cannot occur more often than every 20 seconds. Now remember, these are, I believe those stats are at 10 out of 10. Keep that in mind. The new set items, I never spoke of these in my update video. I, I just forgot to talk about them. I'm sorry about that. So here we go. These are going to be damage dealt to enemies suffering from the damage over time effects is increased. So another one where I believe it's fire poison or something where they're being damaged over time maybe even a freeze type effect damage dealt to enemies suffering from the damage over time is increased by 15 percent critical hit chance is increased by two and a half percent up to 25 percent for every enemy suffering from your damage now remember you need two set items equipped to get the first of those skills the set property you need four equipped to get the second set property and you need a full set of six now how is this going to affect drop rates we're going to have new set items being dropped in dungeons. One new dungeon. It looks like some dungeons are going to have an extra set piece that could drop there. Uh, it's going to be particular dungeons. I don't know which ones they're going to be yet. And those, uh, well, so that's how it's going to be kind of worked into the mix. I'm not sure how the math is going to work out regarding odds of getting one of these versus others. So we'll see. Then, uh, so we have right here the two, four, and six piece properties right here. Now, the six piece property, which we didn't talk about, was when you apply a damage over time effect to an enemy, you enter poison rage for 12 seconds, during which your damage will corrode enemies, dealing damage over three seconds. Cannot happen, but every 40 seconds, I hate the 40 second stuff. It's so long. It's so long. But uh, okay, so these are the dungeons where you can get them in. Banquet of eyes set items will drop from the following on hell five and above bilious bang badlet ring caverns regard that's in the forgotten tower the other the top one's in the dread reaver we have this one in mad king dread reaver again so dread reaver has two well has the rings uh kakora's rapids and tome of fahir so that's where we can get those and you have to decide, is that set item worth it for your build? Is it going to benefit your build or are you going to stick with what you have? I know that Blizzard has been feeling kind of like uh, the third property for getting six pieces has been a little bit weak. So I'm wondering if they if this is kind of a buff, buffed thing. You sh The third set property should be like the best because you want, you would think you would want people to wear a full six piece set rather than a four two a four piece and a two piece set to get those first properties but to each their own i would love to see the third set bonus property be the biggest one because it's the hardest to get all of them together all right we have another event coming which is essentially just going to be rewards pearls legendary gem and a, and a 
bound legendary crest just for participating in the regular stuff we have recall a friend it looks like they're trying to get more people into the game i will tell you i have never been able to get even one person to come to the game and that's me as a content creator it's because everyone that watches is already in the game this hasn't worked for me i hope it works for them i want new people coming to the game uh we don't even care about all this because it's most likely not going to happen all right so we have some feature updates we have the right of exile players belong to both the winning and losing sides will be rewarded with items including guaranteed legendary and set items hilts and scrap materials these are provided directly after completing the right so enhanced rewards in the right of exile now raid the vault is also buffed because when you kill monsters when you're raiding the vault it's going to drop items for you experience and gold shadow wars players that engage in the shadow war will be rewarded with increased experience and guaranteed random legendary love it defend a vault players that successfully defend the vault will be rewarded with hilts experience gold and scrap materials so defending and attacking the vault will give you enhanced rewards i'll be honest with you i never raid the vault ever ever maybe i will now heavy ornate chests are going to drop a monstrous essence blob great i love monstrous essence i'm a huge fan of those things all main quests will reward ex additional experience which means doing your bounty board things every day is going to be more rewarding for you that's awesome players will receive a rare cast from rare crest as they complete exploration achievements for each zone cool on the on over oh, one overarching theme of this patch is recurring of rewards all right so they want to get more rewards all the way around which is cool Battleground and Rite of Exile balance. The defense win condition of killing attackers in both Battlegrounds and Rite of, in in at Rite of Exile has increased from 55 to 65. So instead of having to defend in Battleground or the right, if you used to be able to get 55 kills on defense and it would end, it would be over. Now, if it's sick, now it's bumped to 65, a little bit harder because remember, it's like 40% chance win if you're on offense and it's about a... Uh, it's about a 60% chance to win if you're on defense. I think I have that the right way. Shadow War time changes. Now you can use rare crests. You can use 10 rare crests all at once in an Elder Rift. I love this. No more three at a time nonsense. You can now use 10 just like legendary crests. That's really good. Now we have more Heroes Journey chapter rewards as well. Super cool. We don't need to go through all of those. Hilt's Vendor has just increased their inventory. The following two transactions may be performed up to 15 times a week. Uh, scrap materials, enchanted dust. Well, those aren't, I don't need those. Activity calendar. Yeah, we love that. Cool navigation menu. Also achieved a few quality of life improvements to work in the tandem with the clan centric features. A new clan tab has been added to the navigation menu. Awesome. And the quest tab has been removed from it. All right, cool. I like that. New Bestiary Adventures. We have 20 new Heradric Altar turn-in pages. I still haven't completed all of my pages, but uh, we got new ones now, which is great. You collect 10, you unlock a page, or you get a duplicate page. The Clan and Cycle of Strife. Okay, yes, right. Now, remember, easier to become part of a clan and to become part of a shadow uh, to become a shadow. And now you will automatically be able to be invited to the shadows without reading this in depth and you can just easily get into a clan and clans that are light will be like um uh, pushed in a way a friendly nudge to get more people in their clan because clan activities are a lot more important so really nice that being able to find clans and to be able to be part of the shadows is going to be a lot easier no longer do you need to enter the lottery which was very clunky they're removing clunk but they're adding a lot of clunk with the new pvp in my opinion the hide helmet option up oh, up oh, yes we can now hide our helmet we were supposed to get it in the last update but there was some bugs there so they held off looks like they got it right now but they say you can now hide the helmet in the cos on select cosmetic sets is this going to make you buy specific cosmetic sets so you can hide the helmet or is it going to be most cosmetic sets hopefully it's not pay gated depending on what skins you get um, I don't think it's going to be. Let's hope it's not. What else? And there's some bug fixes. Man, there's a lot going on in this update. We have it tomorrow. I'm excited for it. I'm a little worried about the PvP mode that it's going to be as... That's going to fail. I think it's a little bit... I think it's for the top echelon of players. Players that are, you know, die hard into the game, which is probably 5%, maybe 10 
And I think for the rest of people, it's going to be too over their heads and they're not even going to participate. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that it's awesome and that everyone does. We'll see. Time will tell. As I mentioned, I have not gotten my hands on it. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the live stream tomorrow and tomorrow's video. I'll see ya.